Today we're looking at the top 20 most valuable soda cans. Those old soda cans you may have laying around the house could be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at old soda cans. Now, I've pulled a few out of our collection here, like this Pepsi one here, steel seamed one here. It does have a UPC code. Now, earlier ones won't have the UPC code. They will look a little different. The seams will be different as well. Sometimes it's the same size, but in different varieties. Here is one that's the exact same 10 ounce size from Montreal, Canada but they each are made differently and they have different sized Pepsi logos on them. That's how you can tell the age on these and sometimes just that little difference can mean a huge value in them. Some designs like this Pepsi one here or the Coca-Cola diamond pattern can sell for hundreds of dollars a piece. Now oddball sizes, shapes, and uses are usually some of the ones we grab up first. Like this Dutch soda machine one from the early 70s here. It's tall, it's made to fit in a certain type of machine. Or we have this one here that was made to be used on British Airlines, and it's a small-sized can, just designed and used by them. Now, one of the most prized examples of any type of soda can are what's called cone tops. Now, this is a fantasy piece. The can itself is real, but someone's attached a faux fantasy-related artwork piece around the side trying to portray it off as a correct cone top. Now, I know this is a reproduction. A lot of people may not. This one didn't exist in real life. That's why it's called a fantasy or a Cinderella piece. A large chunk of these sorts of things we run into have been altered, so you've got to be a little careful when you're out there looking. Had this been a real Pepsi cone top in excellent condition, they can sell for hundreds, if not several thousand dollars, just like the Coca-Cola and some of the other early cone tops. Now, beer cans are made the same way, too. So you'll find cone top beer cans and tin cans of the very same type and construction I just showed you, but for beer. You're the Pepsi generation. Come and have a Pepsi day. Come on, come on, come on and taste the Pepsi way. Come on, come on, come on. Now, cone tops, as I said, are some of the rarest ones out there, and they usually garner the highest price across the board. Soda cans as well, the price can go up and down. One year you could see a can sell for several thousand, and then possibly the next year you may only see it worth a few hundred dollars at best. There's a limited number of people that are willing to spend two or three thousand dollars on a soda can that has rust on it, so just keep that in mind. This is a Queen O cone top can here. It's a sparkling cola, it says extra dry on it. Extremely scarce with nice artwork. The nicer the condition, the nicer the can looks, the higher the price will will be. This one sold for $2,600 plus dollars. And here's a C&C imitation grape soda cone top can. Now the technology of the day, they only could can with these cone tops at the time. They were sealed with basically a bottle cap that would have been on a glass bottle. That was the technology they had at the time to seal these and to make them safe to be able to transport and sell. That's why everything had cone tops at one time. This one easily sold for over $1,400. Here's yet another one from a decently known brand, but this is for one of the root beer sodas that they made back in the day with a clown scene on it. Still a nice can. This one sold right at 1000 bucks. Now here's a nice sought after design. This is a Coca-Cola diamond pattern can. Now what's important about this one here that adds to the value is from Japan. And it's in milliliters instead of ounces. Very, very scarce to find one of these. Most of the cans from this era were just discarded, recycled. 
throughout the time or just rotted and rusted away. These were never meant to be kept, so when they do turn up, something like this can sell for a lot of money, like this $910 Japanese import can here. Now, sometimes it's the oddball, unknown brand you've never heard of that can carry the biggest value out there. Sometimes they were limited in production when they were made to begin with, and for one to survive is extremely scarce. Though, even if it's rusted out, they can still, in some cases, sell for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. This one went for $961 and some change. Most people want them open from the bottom, so they're still displayable. So this should be the top of the can, and this should be the bottom of the can. Now, here is the real deal. This is a 1950s Pepsi Cola cone top can with the cap. It's a very fine example of this. Most of the time, the metal itself is going to be dark and discolored. As long as it's not all rusted up and the text and printing on it are bright and beautiful like this one here, they will still sell for some good money. This is a real fine example of a very scarce can, and it went for just under $800. Now, here's another one of those oddball varieties. Wald Bombs, and it's a flat top soda can. It's orange. This one states naturally flavored. This one's in really nice condition. Sold for over $700. It's one probably most people have never heard of. Now, Donald Duck brand made pretty much anything you can think of. There was orange juice, grape, cherry, uh, orange soda of all types, all with Donald Duck on them. Very sought after cans because it crosses multiple areas. Disney collectors will want these, soda collectors, juice collectors even as well. This one sold for $550. Just like the advertisements, many times you can run into some cans of soda, juice, and such forth that had famous people on them used to advertise just to sell the merchandise. Now, sometimes the value can be determined by where the can came from. Some plants only ran for a very short period of time. Some plants mostly made bottles. So when you find an oddball can, the value can go up greatly again based on the origin of the can itself. This Roy Rogers can sold for over 300 bucks. Now, as I showed you in the beginning, there's many different sizes and shapes of cans in general. This is a syrup can. This would have been sent to a soda shop, and this would have been used to produce the actual soda fountain, Coca-Cola with the fizz and the whole works. It's just like like a syrup in general and that is it. These are fairly scarce. There's many different versions of these same cans. They also came in glass. This one here has a paper label, but many of them will actually be printed with a similar logo as you would find in the cans, the retail cans of the day. This one here went for $500 with the original lid. Different ones from different countries can also carry a value. Just like the Dutch version I showed you in the beginning, it's a different size. Usually the weights and measurements are different on the cans there. This one here is a Sprite can made by the Coca-Cola plant in Taiwan. This one sold for 470 bucks. Age isn't always a factor, too. There are some limited edition ones that can carry a high value for events and things along that line, like a fair, a festival, a concert. They made cans for all sorts of things like that. It's not too sweet. It's refreshing, crisp, and neat. Canada Dry Ginger Ale, it's not too sweet. It's not too sweet. I repeat, it's not too sweet. Canada Dry cools your thirst. It's a taste that can't be beat. It's not too sweet. It's a cold, refreshing treat. Canada Dry Ginger Ale. It's not too sweet. Regular or diet, it's more refreshing because it's not too sweet. Now, some brands are more sought after than others. This is a Dr. Pepper. It's a smaller sized cone top. This is only six ounces, so it's not the usual size. Many people prefer, if they're going to spend this kind of money, to get the full-size version. So in some cases, these oddball ones like this, this smaller size, may not go for quite as much. This one only sold for 425 bucks. It does have the cap as well. Now, most of the soda brands out there, Pepsi, Coke, and the whole works, made various different types of soda. This is a patio brand, and this was produced by Pepsi also. This is Orange Patio. It's a flat top can, open like some of the other ones we've showed you also. This one sold for 214 bucks with many bids. Team is another brand of soda that was made by Pepsi. 
Now these will all be marked as made by Pepsi Cola somewhere on the can, usually near the seam and the copyright logo section. This one's from Montreal, Canada. This one sold for 393 bucks. Sometimes the artwork is the main reason that someone wants it. This is a Cupy Pop. It is a scarce can. This one easily sold for 288 bucks with many, many, many bids. Now the amount of cans made for any type of variety are a big factor sometimes in the value also. Diet cans from the earlier days of diet soda as well as sugar-free and variants like that can usually carry a decent value. This is a Diet Dr. Pepper can in very fine condition. Again, these were limited in production. Sometimes they were test or only limited in certain markets. So they may be very hard to have found even when they were new and still being produced. This can here sold for 175 bucks. Here's a really nice one here. This is Mother's Pride Grape Soda. It's artificially flavored and clearly stated as such. This one's one of those hard brands to find. It was limited in production when it was first released. Many times, too, some of the weights of the cans, this is a 12-ounce, but sometimes a 10-ounce can can carry a better value than a 12-ounce can or vice versa. Now, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes the soda companies made ones for special events. This is one that was made just for a golf tournament. It's an original one just made for one specific event. This is Menlo College Scholarship Fund from 1977. It's a very scarce air-sealed can. Sometimes there wasn't even soda in it. It was just a giveaway as a collectible. This one sold for $1,875. One of the hardest collectible limited run cans that I can think of. It had multiple bids as well. Now, another thing soda companies did were run test runs. They would try a new design, a new style of can, a new opening mechanism in a certain limited market to see how well it was received. They're called test runs, and this is a rare test run from the 70s of Sprite, made by Coke, if you are not aware. It's an early all-aluminum can. This one sold for hundreds of dollars, as you can see here. And here's another prototype from around 1980, and this is for Mountain Dew, an interesting pattern again. Now, sometimes these were just air sealed. There would be nothing actually in the can, and they were handed out as samples. Sometimes they actually ran them with soda in them. Sometimes they were never produced, and these were only available to the employees at the factory as well. Anytime one of these unique patterns shows up, they can sell for hundreds, if not thousands, like this one here. Now, something else that shows up are unformed cans. They can show up in complete sheets or single cans that someone has cut out like this Donald Duck orange soda one here. You can run into them for any type of variety, Pepsi, Coke, the whole works. They are highly collected. You can even find a whole entire sheet that has never been cut that has dozens of cans on them. These are pieces of artwork. They are hung on the wall. People will frame them also. This unformed can here sold for $325. Bucks. And here's just another example of an unformed can for Hippity Hop Pop. It's an interesting, probably a tie-in for Easter of some sorts, very obviously. This one sold for $325 also. Now, one last area to think about are errors and misprints from the factory. Now, this one here looks like a Mountain Dew can, but what you're looking at here is a diamond pattern Coca-Cola can that's been printed on a second time with the Mountain Dew logo. Now, this might have been a test run at the factory, probably never should have gotten out. Now, this one hasn't sold, but you can see the kind of value people place on some of these sorts of items. Either way, something like this would easily be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars either way. Now, other factory errors that are highly sought after are partially filled cans or empty cans that manage to get out into the retail market. So when you buy a 12-pack or a 24-pack, if you find an empty can or one that is not filled all the way, but yet it's still sealed, those will carry a value. Those can easily sell for hundreds of dollars as well. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Station.